Oh, hello. My name is Jason Beaumont. I'm a member of the LA Winds, and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the horn. The French horn, or just the horn as we like to call it, is a member of the brass family. It's a unique instrument for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's the only instrument that plays away from the audience. So what you hear is our reflected sound. You might also notice that the horn is the only brass instrument where the valves are played with the left hand. And the reason for this, it goes back to the olden days when the horn was primarily used as a hunting instrument. Riders would ride on horseback, holding the reins with their left hand, and then and the coiled compact shape of the horn would rest nicely on their right arm as they rode and played. Whoa, this attribute stayed with the horn when it was introduced to the orchestral setting. Composers over time have made great use of the hunting calls, just like Wagner did in Goddardammerung. or like Dvorak did for two horns in his famous New World Symphony. Another feature of the horn you've probably noticed that it's the only instrument where you put your hand in the bell for some weird reason. And that weird reason is because hundreds of years ago there were no valves on the horn and the only way you could play all the notes of a scale were to alter the pitch with your hand, kind of like this. This wasn't a very efficient way to play, so eventually valves were added to the horn. Our hands stay in there now to this day because composers and audiences alike had already become accustomed to the sound the horn produced with our hands in there. Many composers, like Gustav Mahler, make use of a technique called stopped horn. That's when we plug up the hole completely with our hand and it produces a brassy, muffled tone that adds an interesting tone color, but also can be used to emulate distant echoes, like this excerpt from Mahler's Fifth Symphony in the Scherzo movement. One thing you may have heard about the horn is that it's one of, if not the most difficult instruments to master. Now, I don't know about that because I haven't tried all the other instruments, but it is a great fact to throw out there, especially right after you miss a note. One of the things that makes the horn unique is also what makes it difficult. It's a conical instrument, meaning that the diameter of the horn starts very small, and as the horn goes and goes around the tubing, it gets larger in diameter. And if you were to stretch the horn out all the way, it would measure somewhere around 16 feet. And that puts it between the tubas and the trombones lengthwise. And if you were to look at a pipe organ, you would notice that the longer pipes are the ones that produce the lower sounds and the shorter pipes produce the higher sounds. What this means is that the horn should be pitched between the tuba and the trombone, but it's usually pitched between the trumpets and the trombones. That means that we're playing in a higher partial of the harmonic series. Well, this is all very technical and my eyes are glazing over just talking about it. But a good way to visualize this is to look at a picture of a piano where the keys get smaller and smaller as they get higher and higher. So couple this with a tiny mouthpiece and we're walking quite a tightrope there with very little room for error. Of course, this is part of what gives the horn such a great unique sound and helps composers bridge the gap between brass and woodwinds. And that's kind of how it gets used. So we can do sweet melodies like this from Brahms' Third Symphony.
or we can be used for big, brassy, dark sections like Dvorak did in his famous New World Symphony. The horn is still loved for its sound today, and there's no better example of this than the music of the movies, with John Williams being the greatest champion of the horn sound. He too loved the different extremes of the horn's timbre, whether it was Luke Skywalker looking off at some binary sunsets, or Indiana Jones kind of stretching the limits of the job description of archaeologist. Well, that's just about everything I have to tell you about the horn today. I hope you learned something and found it useful. Now, if you excuse me, I have some practicing to do, so I'll see you later. <laughs>